The Art of One Dojo is funded in part by Patreon. Help keep the channel running and gain access to exclusive content, including behind the scenes looks, training tips, outtakes, throwback videos, ebooks, free video workshops, store discounts, episode early access, and more. Join the dojo today! Wardrobe choices in the martial arts come in many styles and flavors. Now, historically speaking, most people trained in regular civilian clothing or perhaps even robes. In more modern times, a variety of arts have adopted more standardized uniforms. In many cases, the styles and choices of uniforms play a specific role in that art. Either for function or fashion, today we're going to look at a few different types of uniforms. Now, I've loved martial arts ever since I was wee little boy, but back then I was part of the majority of the public who couldn't tell you the difference between karate, taekwondo, hapkido, jiu-jitsu, let alone the different styles within them. Now, back in the 80s, it was all just karate, and what I knew, I knew from TV. As a kid, I just assumed that all karate gis were standard across all martial arts and probably went back hundreds of years. I remember, you know, wearing white bathrobes and tying them together with any colored uniform or colored fabric that I could find and pretending to do karate. But as a kid, to me, a gi was just a gi. And if you did martial arts, then you just wore one. It was that simple. It wasn't until my early teens when I started to actually learn the arts when I realized how wrong I was. And as I got older and deeper into my training, I realized just how many varieties there were. So today I thought it would be fun to explore some of the different types of uniforms. Now this is not a full comprehensive list of all arts, but rather just a starting point of discussion. If you have any suggestions, or if you can tell us about a uniform that I did not cover today, then please, by all means, add it in the comments below. So let's start with the gi. Not only was my childhood belief that all arts wore the same gi incorrect, but so was the assumption that it had been around since ancient times. Now you can come across many different official names for this one, one of them being the keikogi, basically translating to practice dress or practice clothes. The Keikogi was actually standardized by Judo founder Jigoro Kano, and we talked about him briefly in a previous episode, How Many Belts Are in Karate, because Kano was also instrumental in establishing the belt ranking system seen in the Japanese arts today. Now the Keikogi, or Dogi, is usually just shortened to just Gi. Introduced at the beginning of the 20th century, Kano established the Judogi to be used in Judo, and that became the first of the modern martial arts training uniforms. The judogi was generally made from a heavy, unbleached cotton or cotton blend with the pants a lighter canvas material. Now the gi jacket overlaps and is held together by the obi or belt. The judogi is also often made with tear resistant stitching since it will endure a lot of grabbing, tugging and throwing. The pants will often see some extra fabric layers in the knees to prevent holes from grappling the groundwork. Today you can find all sorts of different varieties, weights and colors of the judogi. The standard now is bleached white, which is traditional with most Japanese arts that use a gi. In competition, you'll often also find both blue and white uniforms, you know, distinguished between the two, the two contenders. Now, the popularity of the judogi spread, and it wasn't long until other arts began to adopt it as well. Gichin Funakoshi, the founder of Shotokan and the man who brought karate to Japan, liked the uniform and he decided to standardize it to his teachings as well. Minor modifications were made to the gi over time for karate, such as a lighter canvas material and adding strings to the inside of the jacket to hold it closed and keeping it sharp and neat looking. Now, karate gis are often looser fitting to promote more speed and freedom of movement in striking and kicking. Now, one of my favorite things about the gi, the karate gi, is that crisp sound they make when performing a well-executed kick or strike. There is just something so satisfying about throwing a punch and hearing that snap. The judo gi typically doesn't make that sound, but then again, this goes to highlight the difference in applications and styles of uniform. One is meant for heavy grabbing and tugging, while the other is meant for striking and faster movements. Now, it's not uncommon to interchange between them, especially if you trained in one art and you want to try out another, but they will have their limitations. Like, for example, anyone who has worn a karate gi and grappled with it will know that the first thing to tear will be these little strings that hold the uniform close. Now, karate gis also come in a myriad of colors and designs. Now it's usually up to the school what colors they want to use. Sometimes uniform color can be used to distinguish teachers from students, or advanced ranks from beginners, or we're specialized for demonstrations and exhibitions. Sometimes styles will adopt their own color trends, like for example, Tang Sudo typically has a white style gi with a black trim. That's pretty, you know, standard for them. It's kind of a, their trademark. Some arts require students to wear all white uniforms, but after reaching a certain rank, they're allowed to wear black pants. 
Now, Ed Parker's American Kempo Karate popularized the use of the black gi. Now, traditionally, students would usually wear a white gi until reaching the rank of brown belt, when they would then wear the black gi. It is also not uncommon to see Kempo schools adopting all black uniforms as a standard for everyone. Again, it's up to each school. Now, when I was training with my first instructor, the colors got a little out of control, if I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Our standard uniform was all black, and we could only wear the black uniform until we reached black belt, and then we were allowed to wear blue if we wanted to. We even got these nifty uh, black and blue uniforms, which were typically a um, Taekwondo pullover style, but I'm gonna get back to that. But if we were part of the black belt club, we got to wear the red top with our black pants, you know, black belt club, and we got our black stripes through our belt. But if we were student teachers in the class and we were assisting and helping teach a class, we got black and yellow uniforms. Except if you were a junior and you were teaching class, then you got black and white uniforms. But if you're on a demo team, we got these snazzy black, red, and yellow stripe uniforms. Like I said, in those days, it got a little out of control. My second instructor basically kept us in the black uniform until he opened it up and said, let us wear whatever color we wanted. He was more focused on the material and training and cared less about the uniform color. The bottom line, to each their own. Judo and Japanese Jiu-Jitsu gis are pretty similar as they both do similar throws, takedowns, and grappling. However, with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there are some modifications, mostly notable in the sleeves, which are smaller and tighter fitting to, you know, compared to the larger baggier sleeves of Judo, and typically they have a shorter skirt and belt. In Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there is more focus on groundwork and the baggy uniform can be used against you when you're grappling. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gis also come in a variety of colors as well, but the most common are blue, white, and sometimes you see black. Now, going back to Taekwondo, they often wear a pullover variation of the uniform. Now, this style of uniform is called a dobok, and much like how the karate gi was modeled after the formal Japanese dress of a kimono, the dobok is modeled after the Korean formal dress of the hanbok. Now, dough box are characterized by the V-neck collar versus the open jacket, although sometimes you can find the jacket style you use. Now, they are generally lighter weight, you know, a thinner material, especially since Taekwondo places a lot of focus on speed, kicking, and aerial moves. They are also very comfortable and easy to work out in. However, I do not recommend them at all for any grappling as they are not meant to endure tugging and pulling and they will tear. Now we used Dobok style uniforms for a while in my first dojo and as you can see, they pretty much all tore at the collar, the V-neck, the junction, just from basic sparring. So eventually I just stopped wearing them all together and just went back to the standard karate gi. There are even gis that stand in the middle ground, such as the uniform used in Hapkido. It is light enough weight to promote fluid motion and striking, yet it is also stitched to be resilient in some of the grappling work. Then we come to Aikido and the Aikido gi. The Aikido traditionally uses a gi modeled after the Judo gi in order to endure the pulling and throwing found in the art, yet some schools will use a variation of the Karate gi to accommodate the strikes and counters. Aikido finds itself in somewhat of a middle ground between the disciplines because it has throws and grapples, but not as much as Judo or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and it has strikes, but not to the extent of Karate. And as a result, you will find a varying style of uniforms across different schools, but generally they need to allow for fluid and quick motion while also being able to be tear resistant. Many of them will also have reinforced stitching in the collars and thicker parts for the groundwork. Now there doesn't seem to be a single particular standard for the gi, although some manufacturers are trying to establish a style that can become customized for Aikido, featuring shorter sleeves, tighter fitting jacket, a longer skirt so that it stays tucked into the hakama. Now, the hakama is a formal piece of clothing in the Japanese culture worn over the kimono and it is often found as part of the Aikido uniform. It appears as a skirt, although in Aikido, they wear it the divided version, which resembles baggy pants, and it is worn over the gi. The hakama is typically reserved for higher ranking belts or sometimes only by instructors. The hakama is also used in other arts such as kendo, aido, and some styles of jiu-jitsu. Now, when it comes to the Chinese arts, there is much less uniformity. Now, we touched upon this briefly in what is Kung Fu. In traditional Chinese martial arts, each art decides what they want to wear. Sometimes they will have standard uniforms, other times they will just wear civilian clothing. With thousands of years of history and styles, we don't see the same standardization in dress that we do in the Japanese or Korean arts. Now with that being said, there are elements of uniforms that are shared across multiple arts. Probably most notable and iconic in Kung Fu or the Chinese martial arts is the Tang Zhuang or the formal Chinese jacket. It is commonly made out of silk, features a straight collar, and often has frog buttons. And you will see many styles of Kung Fu utilize this in their uniforms. Other Chinese arts, such as the wrestling art of Shui Zhao, will sometimes use a specialized jacket to stand up to consistent pulling and throwing. It is much shorter and smaller than the dogi, sports short sleeves, 
no skirt, and has a cotton tear resistant weave very similar to the judogi. Now, if we venture out a little bit more, we can still find some more variations of the gi, such as the sambovka, or jacket of Russian grappling art of sambo. Sambo is extremely popular as a competitive combat sport, and the standard uniform is the gi jacket, similar to the judogi with some minor differences, particularly in cut and length. The material is typically canvas or another heavy material as it will be taking a lot of abuse. The jackets are either red or blue, and the competitor wears matching wrestling shorts and shoes. Now, in the Vietnamese martial arts, such as Vovanam, you will often find a gi that is extremely similar to the karate gi. The standout feature is really the color. Now, while some Vietnamese arts will use, you know, different colors of uniform, the most common one is indigo, which to this day has become the distinguishing feature in their uniforms. So these were some broad looks and examples of how a very similar concept can vary across different cultures. Now, what I personally found very interesting is that in many cases, the style of uniform used in the martial art often reflects stylistic attributes of that culture's formal wear. Taking inspiration from formal dress and adapting it to the nature and requirements of the arts and you end up with a wide array of flavors based on the same basic design. In the description below, I have also listed some links to some uniform options. If you have any interest in purchasing a uniform, then that might be a good place to start looking. Now, when it comes to etiquette, when you join a school, you will likely need to adopt whatever uniform they use. Now, if you are like many of our viewers and you have mixed backgrounds or experience in multiple arts, then you will likely have different uniforms. But when you're trying a new art or you're training as a guest in another school, it is best to consult with the instructor and that school owner on how they want you to dress. Sometimes they don't mind you that you wear your old uniform to class, especially if it's a trial. But just keep in mind the certain limitations, like we mentioned before. You may or may not want to wear a lightweight dobok if you're going to do grappling. Most of the time, if you try it out of school to see if you like it, you'll often be able to wear your old uniform. But if you do decide to stick with it, then good etiquette says, go ahead and get the appropriate uniform of that style and that school. So that was just a look at a few different types of uniforms. Now I'm really curious to hear from any of our viewers who might wear something different, or if you want to contribute information about some other uniforms that arts might wear. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you on the mat.